Welcoming in the CEO, president of AEW, no big deal. Mr. Tony Khan, it is an honor to have you here. Kiss FM Chicago. Great to be back. Good to see you, Brady. It's been a while, man. I know you've been busy with traveling the world, taking AEW from city to city. And this week, you were just telling me, you guys are bouncing from what? From, from Reading to Newark to Chicago. Yes. Three big events. Huge events all in one week. And it's the biggest weekend of the quarter in AEW. It's the biggest mm. pay-per-view event of Q4. And it's one of my favorite pay-per-view shows of the year. AEW Full Gear, it's always a great show. I think it's been our most consistent show mm. from year one. And I absolutely love this event. And this year, it's going to be a great show. It's this Saturday on pay-per-view. You can order it on cable, satellite, YouTube, ppv.com, Triller. Used to be we had Bleacher Report for this, but Bleacher Report, uh, they aren't doing pay-per-views anymore. So now we've expanded to pretty much every digital pay-per-view provider we can get. Any way uh, you want to watch it Saturday, it's going to be a great, great show. And before then, we have Wednesday Night Dynamite. Every Wednesday, we're on TBS at 7 p.m. And uh, something very special coming up next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, the 27th, we'll be here in Chicago. Let's go. I'll see you yes. and the whole crew oh, at yeah. Wintrust Arena. Yep. It's going to be a great event. And it's a very special Wednesday Night Dynamite. It's our traditional Thanksgiving Eve show. And it's also the kickoff of the Continental Classic Tournament. This amazing tournament. Wrestling fans absolutely loved this tournament last year. It's going to be even better this year. I can't wait for it. And it kicks off next Wednesday here in Chicago. So this is a great place for, for Chicago wrestling fans to maybe uh, pick up where they left off if they haven't been to a live show, to an AEW show. For people that are listening right now, explain like what the whole experience is like. Because maybe we have some new people that are like looking for something to do the night before Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be a tremendous event. We have this great show. It's on every Wednesday on TBS. AEW is where the best wrestle, and you're going to see the best wrestlers here in Chicago next Wednesday. You can check out the show tomorrow night on TBS and get a look at it uh, a week ahead. But yeah, every Wednesday night, we go live on TBS with the best wrestlers on the planet. And we've got so much great action happening in AEW right now because this is the go-home week, as we call it. The pay-per-view is this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's a huge show. We have a big crowd coming. Uh, the pay-per-view is actually going to be happening in New Jersey, where the New Jersey Devils play at the Prudential Center. And then we'll be coming here just a few days later to start a new cycle, to start really, I think, the most important tournament all year in AEW. The Continental Classic kicks off here in Chicago. And just like last year, the tournament kicked off with a bang here and ended up being many people thought it was the best event in AEW all year. And that's why we're bringing it back. It starts here next Wednesday. You can expect to see the best women and men in wrestling. We've got a lineup of the biggest stars, the best young wrestlers, and a lot of the big veteran names you're familiar with. And it's going to be a great time. And like I said, it goes live on TBS at 7. The show starts at 6.30. It's at the Wintrust Arena, Wednesday night, the 27th, Thanksgiving Eve, it's become a really great tradition having AEW here in Chicago around Thanksgiving time. You know what's funny is growing up lifelong fan of wrestling, the Thanksgiving and wrestling combination was what we were raised on. It was always turkey, cool, yeah, football. But man, wrestling on Thanksgiving, it's just there's something like super magical about it. Yeah. Is that what was in your head? And now you've kind of created this tradition, this AEW tradition? Yeah, absolutely. I grew up here in Illinois. I grew up in Champaign, actually. And uh, every Thanksgiving came up here to Chicago and spent Thanksgiving up here with my family and watched a lot of wrestling whenever I got a chance. And you nailed it, Braid. It's like, I absolutely love pro wrestling. I love the holidays. And there's something about Thanksgiving in particular that really brings the best out of wrestling and the wrestlers and the fans. Yeah, well, Chicago has the best fans anyways. Yeah. It doesn't matter what time of year. We're, we're a wild bunch over here. Yeah. Uh, I always tell people whenever they ask me about my job, what I do on the radio and, and get to interview artists and people like yourself, I say I'm literally living the dream, right? And I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. It's usually like, living the dream. You are living the dream too. Is this something you've always dreamed of doing? And here we are, you're running this huge, like big ass wrestling company. Yeah, in fact, I was 12 years old going to University of Illinois Laboratory High School and I started uh, writing, I, 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 actually I was in the junior high, but I was in University of Illinois Laboratory School 
and I started writing a show called Dynamite, Wednesday Night Dynamite. No way. And I never knew this. Yeah. When you were 12. Yeah, I've been writing Dynamite since I was a little kid, yeah. and it's what I always wanted to do was bring this show, Dynamite, to television, and now we get to do it on TBS every Wednesday, and it's an exciting time for us. You know, we just signed a new media rights deal. We're going to be on TBS and TNT for years to come, and now the big news for us, we're going to be streaming too. Starting in January, we'll be the first ever simulcast in the history of pro wrestling. Every week, we're going to be on TBS on Wednesday and also streaming on Max. We'll be on TNT on Saturdays, also live streaming on Max. Very, very exciting, wow. and it's the future of wrestling, and it starts here in AEW. I love that you're doing, you're giving the options, too. You're not going to pull the rug under the people that aren't streaming, but you're going to give people that option. Smart. Yeah, especially, you know, I think we saw nowadays... It's nice to have the belt and suspenders. A lot of people were watching the fight over the weekend and had, you know, it, uh, I'm sure on Max we will have the best in-class streaming, but it's great to have both options, right? You can watch it on TBS or on streaming. You can watch it on TNT or streaming. Uh, and that kicks in in January. But until then, we'll be doing it, like I said, on TBS every week. And uh, it's a huge show tomorrow night. You know, it, before the show comes here to Chicago next week, everybody can get a look at what's happening in AEW right now. There's some huge rivalries. We're going into full gear. The world champion is John Moxley. He has been uh, just the king of AEW really since day one, since our first show. He ended the first ever AEW event standing on top of the poker chips at Double or Nothing, atop AEW, and he still stands atop AEW, John Moxley. And he's the world champion. He's taking on one of our most popular stars ever, and I, it's funny because in that same arena, the Wintrust Arena, where we'll be doing the show next Wednesday, it's where John Moxley won the world title for the first time in AEW at Revolution 2020, almost five years ago. And it's where Orange Cassidy wrestled his first ever match in AEW that same night, Revolution 20. Here we are, almost five years later, over four and a half years later, going into Thanksgiving. It's AEW Full Gear. Two of the greatest stars in AEW, John Moxley versus Orange Cassidy, for the world title. And if you haven't seen AEW lately, this is an issue that's really been heating up. John Moxley put Brian Danielson out. He put him into semi-retirement. He ended the full-time wrestling career of Brian Danielson, took the world title from Brian Danielson, and really, I feel, stabbed his best friend in the back. Uh, but John Moxley also is, frankly since day one the most accomplished wrestler ever in AEW John Moxley's big box office for AEW I really love Brian Danielson I miss him very much but also I have to work with John Moxley and uh we have to have him here and so it's an interesting situation in AEW right now and the fans are really really rallying around this pay-per-view we just did a music video set to Guns N' Roses November Rain amazing amazing it was tremendous. Yeah, I was going to talk to you about music because I think that's such a big part of professional wrestling because it captures emotions. I know I play music every day of my life on the radio. And I think there's something about the combination of the music that is selected for certain wrestlers or pay-per-views for that matter. Talk about that process of getting like a November Rain or, you know, getting uh, John Moxley's theme, uh, Wild Thing, right? Yep. Is that tough to do? Do you have to get, do you have to pay for rights and go up the ladder and, and talk to the, the, the songwriters? Absolutely. And in this case, Guns N' Roses were really, really great to work with. And we're very fortunate. We've had these great interactions with so many of the biggest musicians and used so many great songs. Orange Cassidy's come out to Pixies and Jefferson Starship. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned John Moxley has used X, uh, and of course, uh, this Guns N' Roses November Rain video really hyped up the pay-per-view that's this Saturday, AEW Full Gear. If you haven't seen this, you can check out the AEW November Rain video. It's the whole song, and it will catch you up on everything happening in AEW right now. All the stories going into this pay-per-view. It's a tremendous, tremendous video, and Guns N' Roses November Rain, this time of year, November pay-per-view, Thanksgiving time. It was the perfect song. And we're making this in November to remember in AEW. And I've got the rights to the song. I plan to use it again going into the pay-per-view and going into Chicago Continental Classic here next Wednesday at Wintrust Arena. 
uh, you'll get a great preview of the tournament coming out of full gear set to November rain thanks to Guns N' Roses. Perfect. I mean, I love that music, the original Guns N' Roses music video. Doesn't that take you back yeah. to when you were a kid watching MTV when MTV played music videos? Yeah. Uh, who's been your MVP this year for 2024? Uh, give me a male, female, and tag team. Great question. Uh, Christian Cage has been tremendous. Christian Cage, I would say, for the men. Uh, I do think you have to give a nod to the actual MVP, MVP, who's in AEW okay. now. I see Given that there. MVP yeah. is the MVP, yeah. I'd be remiss if I didn't <laughs> mention that we do have MVP, Bobby Lashley, yeah. and Shelton Benjamin, all in AEW now, the Hurt Syndicate. But the the MVP, I think, for the year, uh, MVP notwithstanding, is Christian Cage, in my opinion. He's tremendous and one of our greatest stars ever. Uh, women's, that's a really tough call. Uh, and... It's funny because in the first half of the year, I would have said timeless Tony Storm. Uh, we've had Mercedes Monet, the TBS champion. It's so many great names to choose from. Mariah May, the world champion, has been excellent in the second half of the year. Uh, if you had to pick one name throughout the year, uh, maybe for consistency, I think Mercedes Monet has been excellent and is one of the biggest name free agents in wrestling. But, you know, the first half of the year really belonged to Tony Storm. And the second half of the year has been a lot of Mariah May. Uh, so I'll hedge my bets there. And then uh, tag teams, well, it's it's we have new champions, Private Party, mm -hmm. and they are a great team. FTR have been excellent on Collision every week. Uh, the world champions for a lot of the year, and uh, it would surprise some people to hear me say this, the Young Bucks, I think, have had a lot of... Business is business, Tony. Big successes in AEW. <laughs> and even though we've had our disagreements... Uh, they have been, since day one, a huge part of the company. And I think when you look back at some of the best matches of the year, the Young Bucks were involved in them and maybe the high point of the entire year in AEW, probably the high point in the history of AEW. I know it was the greatest night of my life, probably, was Sting's retirement match. Mm -hmm. And Sting and Darby versus the Young Bucks was the greatest tag match I personally have ever seen. So I have to give a lot, wow. of, a lot of credit to those teams, Sting and Darby and the Young Bucks. What got you hooked? What was the angle? What For me, it was the Mega Powers, easy answer. Uh, but what was the angle, wrestler, match? What was it as a little kid that drew, that drew you in was like, this is, this is going to be my passion? Well, it's interesting. I watch a lot of TV as a kid, and I've always been a kid of television and a creature of night. And I would watch TV. I had a TV in my room as a kid, and I watched TV all night mm -hmm. and uh, until I fell asleep. And I watched the A-Team and G.I. Joe when I was a really little kid, like yeah. six, seven years old. And uh, Sergeant Slaughter was the host of G.I. Joe. And he did the wraparounds and he was like a live action host, but he was also a character in the show and a voice actor as Sergeant Slaughter. And I was a big fan of his. And then I learned Sergeant Slaughter was wrestling. So uh, in like late 1990, early 91, I started watching pro wrestling but sergeant slaughter in wwf was a villain it was weird to see but uh not just a villain like anti-american villain during the uh the, the gulf war yeah <laughs> so. the total opposite of what gi joe was all about right. it was weird yeah. um but okay. i was a big fan of his and then uh hulk hogan was on the a-team as hulk hogan so i watched the a-team and so I started to watch wrestling to see these guys mm. and then i started watching the wrestling and it was my favorite thing and i was hooked uh, I've always been a big sports fan, and the wrestling just slid right in, in kind of a very comfortable place between all the TV I watched and all the sports <laughs> I watched. It's right in the intersection of them. Do you still want, you probably don't have time as an adult running this company and doing all the other things you do. Do you still watch a lot of TV? Yeah, I don't get a chance. You're right. I don't get to watch as much as I used to. Um, I pretty much just have one show at a time, mm -hmm. and whenever I get a break, I'll ch I'll try to catch up on that one show. Yeah. Uh, I was watching The Penguin. I thought it was excellent. Was it good? I haven't, I haven't started. Tremendous. Tremendous. This is probably an oversimplification. Did you see The, the Joker, the yes. first one? Yes. So The Joker, a lot of it was like Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. And if you haven't seen those movies, they're great movies. And if you watch them, you then you'll see them and say, if you've already seen The Joker oh, they were doing a lot of things from this movie, like when he shoots the TV set, that's right out of Taxi Driver. Mm. And there's a lot of the scene with Robert De Niro. That's a, that's juxtaposition because Robert De Niro is the one sitting in the chair, but like King of Comedy, you see uh, Robert De Niro played a guy trying to get on a talk show, a struggling stand-up comedian. And King of Comedy, a lot of that plays into 
Joker. So they took these two great Scorsese movies and took a lot of elements of them and then weaved them into the mythology of the Joker and Batman. And and the, I never saw the second Joker, but the first one was was an excellent movie. And uh, then when I watched The Penguin, to me, there are a lot of similarities to The Sopranos. Okay. There's a mother, there's a Christopher, there's all these elements of the mm. show, and he's like a mid-level gangster working his way up to the top. And it's a great, great show, but I think, you know, there's a lot of comparisons to The Sopranos, which is my favorite show right. ever. So I think Penguin was tremendous. I yep. thought that it's a great, great show, and it's been great for our bosses at Max. And uh, it's there a great, you go. Look at that. Look at how he does. He's a professional. All right, I want to. I want to play a game. It's a one word. Just give me one word about each of these wrestlers that are on your roster right now. First word that pops into your head: John Moxley, champion. Doctor Britt Baker, DMD. Chris Jericho, Nueve nine nine time world champion. <laughs> Mercedes Monet. What's the best way to describe Mercedes Monet? That's a great question. In one word, I think Mercedes Monet is such an excellent wrestler, such an excellent free agent. I got one. Star. That's what I was going to say. Just star. Read my mind. Uh, star is great. Jack Perry. Scapegoat. And last but not least, my personal favorite wrestler in AEW has been for years, MJF. Cerebral. I think we end there. MJF, Cerebral. Love it. Tony Khan. Dude, have an awesome three shows coming up. Thanks for stopping in, spending some time here, and we will be at the Wind Trust Arena one week from Saturday. Chicago's going to Sorry, Wednesday. Yeah. What did I say? Saturday. One week from tomorrow. One week from Wednesday. Thanksgiving Eve. Always a pleasure talking, man. Thank, Thank you, you Brady. It's great to see you, man. You too.